Absolutely, absolutely. Great, thanks, Sarah. All right, well, welcome everybody to our College to Career alumni panel event today. Uh, we're delighted to welcome you all here to join us. Uh, my name is Rodney Ekstrom. I'm the Director of Alumni Relations at Plymouth State University. And um, joining me today, we have a panel of four alums, as well as our partner uh, with Stay Work Play New Hampshire, Sarah Davis. So today um, we're gonna give you a little bit of information about the resources that are available to you through Stay Work Play New Hampshire, as well as through the career development and alumni offices at Plymouth State. And then we're gonna jump right into asking some questions and hearing stories from our alumni panelists. They'll share a little bit about their experience, why they chose Plymouth, what they did at Plymouth and how they transitioned where they are now. And we'll ask some questions of them to share a little bit more about, you know, um, how they got on their path, what advice they might give uh, to future students and, and other things that may come up along the way. So. We're delighted to have you here. Thanks a lot. So with that, I'm excited to introduce uh, Sarah Davis, as I mentioned, from Stay Work Play New Hampshire. Sarah, could you share us a little bit about what Stay Work Play is about and the resources that are available for college students? Yeah, for sure. So thank you guys for having us. We're um, super excited to be teaming up with Plymouth State to kind of kick off this college to career series that we're hoping to move across the state with other colleges and universities as a way to connect with college students and share the resources that Stay Work Play has for them, as well as other resources for young people in general that they might want um, to kind of learn more about the state and what we have going on. So if you haven't heard of Stay Work Play before, we are a statewide nonprofit whose mission is to attract and retain young people here. So we do that in a number of ways, whether that be connecting with college students or connecting with um, young professional networks throughout the state, and really just making sure that everyone is finding their community and finding their people and making a home for themselves here. So um, in terms of things that we have for college students, we have a really large work section on our Stay Work Play website that highlights different job opportunities and other resources that might be of use, cost of living calculators, all that type of thing. Um, we have a Jobs in New Hampshire page, which highlights our Board of Advisors members and the career opportunities that they have. So those are organizations that are really dedicated to the Stay Work Play mission and are doing great things in their communities and dedicated to their young people. So we like to highlight them and kind of the work that we're doing or the work that they're doing. And then aside from work opportunities, we also, like I had mentioned, want to connect people with other things to do and how to meet people. So we have um, we have a really great blog that's actually, we have some new bloggers coming on, which is really exciting. Um, and there's a variety of different topics such as 48 hours. So things that you can do in a short trip to a region of the state or um, great places to eat with the taste, those sorts of things. And then we're also working on our insider's guide to nine different regions of the state. So those are kind of the local feel on what's going on, what to do, where to meet people, what to eat, all the good things going on in the different regions. And that's a free downloadable PDF that can be found on our website. So we have a ton of resources um, available to students and our website is just a large plethora of knowledge of all things New Hampshire. Um, but with that, I'm really excited to be a part of this panel discussion and hear from some young New Hampshire people who have gone to college here and chosen to stay and, and start their lives here. So thank you. Thanks, Sarah. That's great. So I'm excited to welcome four panelists, um, some of which I've known for a long time since they were undergraduates and others I've had the pleasure to get to know um, since being in my role in the alumni director. So I'll just quickly share who they are and then I'll ask each of you to share a little bit more about your story. So we've got Angelica Ladd, uh, community relations specialist with Dartmouth Hitchcock. Anthony Oglesby is an entrepreneur and founder of All Out Fitness. Kevin Bell, Vice President of Marketing at Loon Mountain Resort. And Samantha Kenny, Vice President of Global Marketing at Akumina. So we're delighted to have you all here. And I thought we'd just go one by one in that order. And just, you could share just a little bit about, um, you know, what brought you to Plymouth in the first place? Maybe if you were an out-of-state student or if you grew up in New Hampshire, and what you did at Plymouth and kind of, you know, highlights of your transition from college to where you are now. So Angelica, would you mind starting us off? Sure, yeah. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, really honored to be part of this panel. So thank you. Um, yeah, so my name is Angelica Ladd and I actually grew up in Manchester, graduated from Memorial High School 
And um, honestly, I wasn't expecting to go to college. Uh, I wasn't sure what I wanted to do. Um, and, I, and I applied to Plymouth after a tour and being like, this place is so beautiful, um, kind, of, um, kind of on a whim and was fortunate enough to get in. Um, and that's where my life, I feel, really began. Um, and I majored in theater. Uh, which is funny to me now. I thought uh, for sure I was going to be an actress. Um, and I ended up actually uh, changing majors a, a few times um, and finding my path. Um, and I was a graduated with my, um, my bachelor's in English and my minor in, mar in marketing communications. Um, and I had a really great professor, uh, Scott Quakendall, who, um, who, saw my passion for nonprofit work and worked with me on an independent study uh, doing grant writing. Uh, and that was really the launching pad for the rest of my career. I went into nonprofit work uh, when I graduated. I started at the New Hampshire Food Bank as a development assistant. And uh, for the next 10 years, I worked in development at um, human service organizations. Um, doing fundraising and special events and talking to people, learning to communicate better. Um, and it's it was a, an, an incredible journey. And then finally, um, I landed at Dartmouth-Hitchcock. I've been here for almost five years, first as marketing assistant, and now as community relations specialist, uh, managing our, our charitable giving arm. So um, I'm just really grateful for the uh, flexibility that Plum State offered uh, in and helping me to grow as a person um, and to um, allow me to experiment with um, with the different majors and opportunities and clubs and, and really find um, what I was passionate about. So that's my story in a nutshell. <laughs> that's a great one. I love that. And I, I love that you highlighted um, a professor that made such a difference. I think that's that's kind of a theme from a lot of people. There's there was somebody at Plymouth and Plymouth that's kind of small enough school where you can have those relationships. So thanks for sharing that. So yeah. shout out to Scott Quakendall for sure. That's good. <laughs> so, awesome. Anthony, share a little bit about your story. Hey, how you doing guys? Anthony Oglesby. I'm originally from Brooklyn, New York. I came up to uh, actually go to University of New Hampshire to play basketball. And after two seasons, uh, my wife currently now who, we met in, high, in our, my sophomore year. She became pregnant. Uh, and I decided I needed to find a smaller community, um, focus more on career than uh, the sport. So I interviewed. I got to interview a lot of colleges because they wanted me to play for them. And I just felt at home with Plymouth. Um, I actually had a lot of people tell me stories about Plymouth um, while I was at UNH. And I just felt it would be a good home. Um, I met with uh, Coach Simon. And I told him, I said, you've been, uh, there were, 20 different other people that told me that I'd love the campus and, and everything about the school. So I actually enrolled before even coming to visit. And uh, when I got up here, it was more focused. I was non-traditional, so I didn't even live on campus. So I don't have that same campus life experience everyone else had. Um, but, you know, I started with a social work major, I ended up changing the business, um, graduated with a business degree minor in social work. And I decided to work for Planet Fitness because it was a new up and coming company and it was only six locations. I went with them for 10 years, uh, did a lot, uh, owned small portions of them, decided to sell out my shares when they went public. And I opened up a, another franchise called Tap Out Fitness. Um, I wasn't really, that wasn't the best thing for me because I'm not an MMA guy of fighting like that. I, I'm more general fitness, helping people grow. Um, and I ended up uh, opening up a, uh, the All Out Fitness currently, and I'm working on my second location. Actually, unfortunately, it's not in New Hampshire, but in Maine, <laughs> so staying in New England. Um, and for me, I think it's a uh, when you talk about a professor, it's you know it's John Scheinman, Bonnie Bayshard, who actually kept me involved with the school ever since graduating. Always asked me to come and talk to kids or anything like that. So I enjoy helping everybody at, PS at, at Plymouth just for that reason. It's just to help them grow. So. That's great. I love the, you know, I knew a little bit of your story, of course, um, but the family connection to me is big. And um, of all the people to get connected with, um, John Scheinman may be one of the most family oriented people that I know. Um, yep. And so that's that's awesome. Thanks for sharing. And my, might I add, we now have three kids and my son just got accepted to P Plymouth 
uh, just the other day. Oh, yeah. That's great. That's great. Congratulations. So, That's so yeah. cool. That's yeah. wonderful. That's great. Kevin, do you tell us a little bit about your story? Yeah, uh, thanks. Um, I grew up in Connecticut, um, right next to a little ski hill called Ski Sundown. And uh, I spent every day of my winter there. My mom worked there at night and my actually my best friend and my neighbor, um, his brother, older brother went to Plymouth State. And uh, that's how I really kind of found out about Plymouth. Um, and I'd never, growing up in Connecticut, we went to Vermont skiing and snowboarding like all the time. I, I didn't even know how to get to New Hampshire, honestly. And, uh, and then finally, you know, when it came time to apply for schooling, I was like, wow, yeah, that sounds great. I, I know Mike went snowboarding all the time there and I snowboard all the time in Connecticut. Like, why wouldn't I go do that? Um, and so that's kind of how I settled on it. Um, and then, you know, from a, from a major standpoint, I, I wanted to go into graphic design. Um, but if you, if you ask my family or any of my friends, if I was a graphic designer or I had any artistic uh, ability, they would say, no, why is he doing that? <laughs> um, and, and then uh, it's funny because all my, uh, my family, or a lot of my family are artists. And my grandfather, who's a professional artist, he's a professional painter, he's been doing that for 40 years now. He said to me, Kevin, if you want to make money, don't do a BFA. <laughs> and I was like, and he's a professional artist. I was like, oh, okay, well, I don't even know what that means, Grandpa, but, but thank you anyway. And, um, but so I ended up going to Plymouth and it was, it was just a really great fit for me. I, you know, just being the environment of it was, was so different from being at home in Connecticut. Um, it was where I found like people that are just had similar interests in, with me, um, just wanted to be outdoors. And, um, it was, it was great. Um, you know, the, from a design program, I was, you know, I, I went through the whole, you know, I spent my time in, in D and M, um, that was where most of my stuff was happening. And, um, it was, you know, I, I wasn't the best artist um, and I wasn't the, you know, the best graphic designer, but I was there all the time. Um, and I got kind of like, I got, I got dealt a little blow toward going into my senior years where I, I, I didn't get, qual I didn't qualify for the BFA program because of our portfolio review. So I had to change my major going into a senior year, which was like, ugh, like a, a gut punch. And, wow. um, I remember getting the letter in my mailbox with a buddy of mine after going snowboarding. And I was like, you got in and I didn't like, what do you mean? <laughs> um, but what it taught me was just to be resilient and, uh, and, and to get back up and keep fighting. And um, after, after graduating, you know, I ended up getting a BA with a uh, graphic design option. And I kind of moved around the country for a little bit and ended up, I didn't have, I, I was in Oregon actually. And I was like, man, I gotta come back. Like, I, I don't know what I'm doing. And I, um, I came back and I was living in a closet at my old roommate's house on North River Street. And uh, I started and ended up working at Loon and Waterville and um, just working in the terrain parks and stuff. And, and then uh, my job at, and that's really was the catalyst for kind of getting me here today was really just doing whatever I could to be in a place that I wanted to be. Um, you know, I was waiting tables. I was working in the terrain parks, digging ditches, and I was doing um, like graphic design work on the side for friends for free uh, just to just to keep my like creative spirit going. And, um, you know, that kind of propelled me into kind of different marketing jobs between Waterville and, um, and Loon. And uh, ultimately, I've you know, I've been the VP of marketing here at Loon for just, uh, just over two years, um, you know, in, in a marketing manager role prior to that. Um, and uh, I met my wife at Loon here at the bar <laughs> and uh, we got a five and a, almost five and an eight year old. And uh, yeah, I, you know, I, I came to Plymouth because of the uh, environment, but the, the lifestyle that it like, instilled in me um of like working hard and being in a space that you want to be in is really what's kind of defined my uh 
define my career or, or mental state, I guess, for the last, I don't know, 18 years. And I have to say, I'm the oldest on this panel, and that's really weird for me. So I appreciate <laughs> you being calling me as young, I think. Maybe I'm not the oldest, I don't know, but uh, looking at our graduating years, I was surprised to see that I'm the oldest. So <laughs> thank you. Thanks, Kevin. I, I love the phrase you said, you know, you found your people. Uh, that's another piece that I hear a lot when I talk to alums about why they knew that this was a good fit, right? Found their people. And the other piece that I hear a lot too about Plymouth people that they have in common is um, kind of the grit. You know, most people who go to Plymouth um, are pretty unentitled, right? Um, you know, hardworking people come from hardworking backgrounds. And, and I love hearing that. Um, I didn't do my undergraduate at Plymouth, um, but I feel like that's what I had in common and what I've, why I've stayed here for um, for almost 20 years. And Kevin, I'm, I am older than you, I'm not officially on the panel, so you still get to be a, at least a young one on this today. So, <laughs> um, so thanks a lot for that. I appreciate it, Kevin. So Samantha, I'd love to hear a little bit about your story. Thanks, Rodney, and nice to uh, see everybody here. I know some folks on this panel, like Angelica and I, were both on the clock together, so it's really nice to see everybody. Uh, and thank you, Sarah, for coordinating this. It's really fun to be part of it. Um, so I would say that my story is entirely fortuitous, and it is 100% starting at going to Plymouth. So uh, I'm from northern New Hampshire, uh, Pittsburgh, New Hampshire, for those that um, haven't read my bio. Um, and so there are literally more moose than people in Pittsburgh. New Hampshire, from a family with three kids um, and from um, my parents who worked part-time jobs. So didn't have a lot of income to be able to spend towards college. And so I originally thought that I wanted to go to a private Catholic college, even though I'm not Catholic. I just like the smaller environment. And um, we got the financial aid package back in the mail. And my dad looked at me and he's like, I can't afford that amount of money, Sam. You're going to have to figure out something else. So I applied to Plymouth late in the game, got in immediately. I was accepted pretty much immediately. And um, Plymouth made it right. Like Plymouth got it to the point where I could afford to go to college, which is really an amazing thing that I don't normally share as part of my story. But every piece since then has all been like a, a nice little kind of stepping stone to get me to where I am at now. So I was part of the clock. I was the editor in chief of the clock while I was at Plymouth, um, had a really good, um, a really good team around me there. And I was also part of, uh, my, I was a communications major. So that major was a pretty small major, very close knit group. Uh, but it was what really helped kind of jumpstart the rest of my career, as well as the connections that I had in the North Country at the time. Um, I was brought immediately after I graduated, which was 2008. Um, so 2008, there were no jobs. I don't know if any, <laughs> there, literally nothing. Um, I was waiting tables uh, at the 99 in Tilton and working part-time, just getting whatever experience I could get. And I was brought on board uh, over a year after I graduated to do a branding initiative in Northern New Hampshire. So I drove an hour and a half one way every single day to go to work, every single day uh, to go to Northern New Hampshire because I lived in Southern New Hampshire, but I, the only job that I could get at the time that was in my field was an hour and a half away. And so now I think about that and I'm like, I've been at home in my office for a year and I used to have to com commute an hour and a half one way every day. I don't even want to tell you guys how many miles I racked up on my car. Uh, but that ultimately led to my next job, which led to my next job, which led to my next job, just from people knowing each other. And because New Hampshire is such a small state, I saw something in another company that I either worked with or had a partner on or I made a connection at. Um, and that's ultimately how I ended up now where I'm at at Akumina. And I absolutely love it. It's been, it's been a great journey for me. And it's all kind of, it all, com it all starts with Plymouth State and getting that financial aid package back in the mail and saying, nope, I can't afford it. I got to figure out where I can go. Uh, so that was, that was a really interesting thing to look back on. Thanks for sharing that, that Sam. It, it, what gets me still is that, um, and here's a, something you may or may not have heard, all of you. Um, Plymouth still has about, we hover in the low 40%, like 41, 42% of our students being the first in their family to go to college. Um, and generally making that extrapolation, most of those come from families of modest means, right? And that still floors me in this day and age of, you know, 
2021, that that's still a significant population of people. And I, it's amazing your story of, you know, the ability to come to Plymouth and what that's been able to do for you and what that's going to mean for, you know, for your family moving forward and the changes that makes and that, that, um, that higher education can make that kind of a difference. And that a place like Plymouth fills that niche for so many people is, it makes me very proud to work at a place like this that attracts such smart people and goes on to do, do great things regardless of what their means are. Plymouth does a, has a, a thing where they make, it takes a family, it takes a village to raise a kid and they still follow that concept to this day. And that's why first year students or first year uh, kids that go to college but first in their family, they're always gonna be successful because the whole village is helping. Totally agree. Yeah, and I think that's uh, that's a special thing about Plymouth. I, I, like I said, I went to a different school and I've worked at a few different schools and that doesn't happen everywhere. Like, just it just doesn't, you know, and it's not something you can always just pay to go to a big name school and get either. It, it, it is part of the culture and it's part of the people and it's um, the special people that the work here, some of the names have been shared, but also, you know, people like you guys who give back, who talk to students, who share your stories, who make a connection for a student, make an introduction, and next thing you know, their career, a door is open and, and they're they're walking down that path. And that's that's what makes it happen. And that's pretty that's pretty cool. It's pretty special. So two of you grew up in New Hampshire. Two of you did not, but you all went to college here and then you're also working here. So I'm wondering if there's any more you might want to share a little bit about that. Like when you were graduating, um, you know, Kevin, you shared you traveled around a little bit and things like that, but it might be you guys could share a little bit more about the decision, whether you, whether, you know, like, yeah, I'm going to stay in New Hampshire. Was that in your mind? Um, that, that's where the, the, those boundaries were part of it and, and why that was, or if it wasn't, you know, what other things were in your mind that you're thinking about that might be useful for some of our um, seniors to be thinking about if they grew up in New Hampshire or not, what, what they might think about. So throw that out to whoever might want to pick that up first or anybody else who wants to add on to that. Yeah. I, uh, I, I, you sure? Go right ahead. All right. Um, yeah. After college, you know, I, I think I certainly had grandiose plans to do great things immediately. <laughs> right. And I went back to my, uh, my family's home in Connecticut and I was, hanging out with my girlfriend and working, you know, waiting tables. And my parents were like, after about October, I think we're just like, you need to go get a job <laughs> or like go find a career or something. And I was like, you know what? All right. See ya. And in like two weeks, me and a friend like packed up a car and drove to Oregon. And, and so I really had like, no, I, I like New Hampshire, but I didn't, I wasn't like, yeah, I got to stay there. Um, it wasn't until I was out west, because I think, I don't know, at least from a snowboarding or outdoor perspective, like out west is like, you know, you got to go do it. And once I got out there, I, you know, it was, you couldn't find a job. Um, you know, I had these grand plans that certainly didn't pan out. And then I, you know, I knew I didn't want to go back to Connecticut and I knew that I had friends in Plymouth that were still there, you know, younger than me that were living there and they were kind of just doing it, right? And they were just being outdoors and skiing and snowboarding and having a great time. And I knew I could get a job and, uh, and kind of figure out something. So I, I knew it was the place that I wanted to be, you know, I, but I didn't know how to, I didn't know what my, my path would be. Um, Again, I had these great plans of being a great graphic designer, building logos for companies and doing great design, but I had no way to get there. And it's, it's, a, really, it's a really thing hard thing to come to grips with, at least for me, because when you don't have a path or you can't see a vision, it's like, okay, what do I got to do? And then it, it just kind of, once coming back to Plymouth and, and living in the closet, I like understood that this was the the area that I wanted to be in. And therefore I would figure out a way to be in the place that I wanted to be. Thanks. Anthony, so for me, yeah. Yeah, I always, I always wanted to go back to New York. I was trying so hard and every, every idea I had, everything I wanted to do was back in New York. And, you know, obviously having a kid and 
at the time my girlfriend and she's in New Hampshire, uh, she's born and raised out here. It was kind of like scaring her to be living in a big city. And I'm like, I want to go back to Brooklyn. I want to go back. Mm -hmm. So uh, with Planet Fitness, I had the opportunity to travel around a lot. So I lived in a lot of different states uh, just because we were expanding so fast. And I was uh, the head of like new or new areas. Uh, we went to Cincinnati, Pennsylvania, Chicago, um, went out up west for a little while. And it just got to the point where, are you going to be a family guy or a business guy? Because you can't do both. And you can't, uh, and you can still be happy. So I had, I could, had to figure out where I wanted to decide to live. I had the Chicago, I had Cincinnati, and then I had New Hampshire. And I kind of thought, uh, you know, my son's in middle school now, uh, going to middle school and what's, where, where are the best people at? And that's, you know, where, where do you have the most support? Where, where, the, um, I always look at New Hampshire as like the ideal state that everybody should mimic just from the way people are. Um, there may not be much diversity, but you don't feel it and you don't see it. So um, I never look at it at that angle. I look at it as the people are the nicest you could possibly have. You walk down the street and I walk in the neighborhood, everyone's beeping at me because they know me or you know, someone's walking next to you to say hi and you can't get that anywhere else. That small town feel and it's still a, a large enough place to be and still do a lot of fun things. So um, I have fun all the time. So I love it up here. That's great. Well, I know for me, I, so when I graduated, I, I still had my, you know, high school job waiting for me. Like the, I worked at a grocery store. And so I knew I had a stable, a stable job that didn't pay a lot, but I could, um, I could always, I, I could save up to start whatever the next thing would be. And I did apply for a lot of uh, national nonprofit um, organizations because I was going to change the world, right? Like I was going to work for the public interest research group and I was going to do consumer advocacy. Like that's what I was going to do. Um, but then I, you know, everything kind of just fell into place. Uh, my, uh, my, my now husband, then also a Plymouth State grad, um, he ended up, his parents were like, we're moving to Florida, you got to go. <laughs> like, and so he ended up, we ended up getting an apartment in Manchester and, and just everything kind of like snowballed from there. And we ended up um, loving, living in Manchester uh, as, you know, two young people. The nightlife was great. The, we had so many great friends and it was a different perspective of, of Manchester than what I was used to growing up. Uh, so that was, that was great. So that's, that's kind of why we stayed. And then I just, you know, our careers both, um, kind of launched, which was, you know, an, a bonus like that. We didn't have to like pick everything up and, and go anywhere to, to start our lives. Um, I wish I could have traveled. Well, I still have time to travel and do a little bit more, but, um, for now, like, you know, I can go to the beach, I can go to the mountains, uh, all in one day. So that to me is, um, is a huge benefit. Uh, so for me, I had, so 2008, zero jobs. Uh, I had already, I was working as a waitress anyway, I mentioned at the Tilt 99. And I just decided in 2008, I'm like, I'm not going to put any pressure on myself. <laughs> which mm -hmm. to me now is crazy. Like, I'm not going to put any pressure on myself. I'll be able to find a job. No problem. I sent out over a hundred resumes, got one call, two callbacks, one interview in 2008. And that was like the huge kick that I needed to be like, oh, okay. I actually need to kind of take this seriously now. I need to actually find either a part-time or something that I can, that I can do. And it wasn't that I made a conscious decision to stay in New Hampshire. It was that I made the decision to not go live in Boston with five other people in an apartment was essentially what I wanted to do. Um, so that was my, that was my big thing. And then as I started, my career started rolling I had the opportunity to work for some very community minded businesses. So other organizations where their CEO or the CFO or CRO had kind of grown up, lived in and had then started a business in New Hampshire. So Silver Tech was one of them. The CEO there, Nick Sogu, is very much involved in pretty much everything Manchester and in the state. And so he's very community oriented. And so that kind of solidified my roots here. And during my time at Silver Tech, I was there seven years. 
I had the opportunity to become, uh, I was part of Leadership Manchester, which is a fantastic program. I partnered a lot with the chamber. I did stuff with the Manchester. I was this um, the head of the Manchester Young Professionals Network for a little while. So that truly solidified my just thing here. I bought a house. I had a kid all in those seven years. So that just made it like, yep, okay, I'm staying. But at the same time, had the opportunity to travel sometimes almost every week on a plane to some corner of the United States. So I feel like I've I've been there, done that from, I think I've been to almost every single state. I think the only one I haven't actually been to is Oregon, which Kevin will compare notes later. Uh, but it was, that was kind of my just, it wasn't a conscious decision, decision to stay, but I also knew I didn't want to do the alternative at the time, even though I could have gotten a job. Um, I just felt way more um, comfortable, long-term connected to New Hampshire at the time. That's great. I love hearing all those stories. I think what's great about those stories is, um, you know, there's probably some quote, from somebody famous, you know, like about you looking back, sometimes you can see a linear path, but as you go forward, there isn't one. But when you're a college student, I think you really feel like there's a linear path, right? Yeah. I got my degree and then obviously I'm going to get hired doing what I'm amazing at, right? And then life goes on and, 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 and I'm gonna, you know, do, a good, do amazing things. And obviously you guys are all doing amazing things now, but that, that path is different. So I guess I'd love to switch it over to think about, you know, given where you're at now and thinking back to who you were as a college student, um, what advice would you have given to yourself? Um, and maybe that may be useful to courage current college students as you think back um, that you think would be be useful. So you may want to start us off with that advice to, the, advice to your, your college age self. I would say don't quit your waitressing job before <laughs> you have another job lined up. Don't, don't be that person. Don't, don't storm out. Don't do it. It's not a good idea. Love I didn't storm out, me. but yeah, just don't don't quit the waitressing job because then you have to go back a month later and ask for your job back. I've yeah. been there, done that, got the t-shirt. Waitresses <laughs> do that a lot though. I just had one <laughs> yesterday tell me that. <laughs> I'm telling you, don't do it. Make sure you have a job lined up before you leave your job. Just mm -hmm. that's my that's my number one piece Great. of advice. Great advice. That was always the rule in our house too. My dad would always say, you cannot quit whatever job you have, no matter how much you don't like it. You can, you can be a hostess at that restaurant forever, but you can't quit it until you get a new one. That's the rule. And yep, I would, I would stand by that. Well, what I, what I think is important about those jobs, and it sounds like we all have kind of a little background there, but um, it can take you anywhere, right? Like you can be in the service industry anywhere in the world, especially in this country, but in the world. And it can help you align to a career or a company or an industry that is in that area. And, you know, the people that I, I deal with or work with, like the, the grit and determination and the, to get things done that you have to do in the hospitality uh, industry is like no other. The pace of it is, there's so many lessons to be learned in that industry that can be, that are, that translate to all of our careers right now. So I, I the time I've spent in restaurants is in, invaluable in my life. So true. I would say don't uh, don't think that any job's too good for you. Um, when I like, you know, I always go back to Planet Fitness because I think they um, that it was a small company at the time. So I'm really good friends with the founders till this day. And you know, when I spoke to him about getting a job with them, he's like, "Yeah, we'll we'll, we'll get you one as soon as you graduate. Come see us." And I got super excited. I think I'm going to be making all of this money. And day one, I go, "So how much am I getting paid?" Oh, eight twenty-five an hour. I was like, I got a college degree. I was like, well, everybody starts at the bottom. And, you know, and I worked my way up within six months. I'm managing the places. I'm now traveling. So no job is too small. And if there's opportunity to grow, take the small position and work your way up. I agree 100% with that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. And I'd also say just show up, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like, and like whether you're at classes and just, just go, right? And even if they're remote, put your camera on and be accountable for being there. That is because not only does it show that, you know, from a professor or, or 
group standpoint that you're committed to being there, which is like the bare minimum that you can do. Um, but it also makes you accountable. You know, I'm going to do at, at least this, right? Even if you're not interested in that class, whatever, I, I'm here and I'm going to do it and I'm going to be there. And that just carries through with your work too. Like you're going to have good days and you're going to have bad days, but you're going to go and you're going to be committed and you're going to do the work. And that's the easiest thing that you can do and just do it. Love that. Yeah. I think mine would be just stay flexible, like stay flexible. I, I guess I changed major. So I, like I said, I started as a theater major. Then I was a early education or an education major. And then finally I landed on English uh, in, in writing and I just be flexible and let your, let yourself find your passion. I mean, be realistic. Um, but, but it's not, there is no linear path that could take a little bit before you find your way. Um, and just take the advice of people who've been there, uh, before you, uh, talk to your advisors, um, and because a lot of times your advisors or a professor that you're really close to will see something in you that you don't even see. Um, so be flexible and be open to that criticism um, because that, that, that's gonna be helpful uh, along the way. So we've all switched majors at the last minute because <laughs> I did mine <laughs> my senior year. I went from social work for, for three years to business. Yeah. Because you just never know. I always find it was, impressive. Oops, sorry, go ahead. No, no. I think the weird thing is like, I didn't even know that all of my, all the classes that I was taking ultimately added up to the major that I should have been in the whole time. Like it was <laughs> like the classes kind of drove me to where I was going. So it's awesome. Yeah. That's great. Yeah, I was going to say, I always find it impressive those kids who pick their major and go into college and come out with the same one, that, same one that they went in with. I'm like, how did you do that? How could you have possibly known that that's what you wanted to do? I mean, good for you, but I, it's, I think it's an intimidating thing to think about for college kids, but it's so natural and it's so relatable to so many people who have come out of college successfully. So to build on that and a little more about what Angelica said, one of the things I came to tease out was like every little tiny thing that you're doing is a lesson to learn as cliche as that sounds like for real, it is incredibly cliche, but it really is teaching you something as you go along. And actually, Kevin, you said really resonated with me because I, I tell my team all the time, everything that I ever needed to learn in life, I learned from waitressing, like everything I ever needed to learn in life. I still use those skills all the time. So even those classes that you don't think are going to be relevant, I was actually saying to my copywriter the other day, I was like, you know, I have never used, don't hate me math majors. I have never <laughs> used that math class, but philosophy, I've used it at least three times this week to get my point across to different people. Like this is actually working. And I actually referenced one of my textbooks from my philosophy class at Plymouth State. I was like, talk about something I never thought I would have used. And that was a class I, again, cover your ears, not for me. Uh, so it was, just, it's so funny that it's like, okay, what is this trying to teach me? What is this trying to like get out of me to get to? Because you're right, Angelica, there's things that people see in you that you never see in yourself ever. And you may never. So it's really fun from that perspective. Absolutely. I was, I was uh, thinking about this panel and like, you know, my, my Plymouth experience and then you know Samantha what you're just saying like every like little lesson and how it kind of carries forward I I in my one of my design classes our our task was to redesign the brochure for one of our the three ski resorts in the area and that was Cannon, Waterville or uh, Loon and I remember the professor holding up like all three and like the Cannon one was pretty good the Waterville one was pretty good and then the Loon one was like you know, designed by this incredible agency. And it's like, I remember looking at the copy and the photography, I was like, oh man, like, there's no way I'm going to try to redesign that one. Like that one's easy. Like there's no one's touching that. And like, now that's my job, right? Is to execute that, you know, that level of, of excellence. It's, and when I think about that, I don't know when that was 2000, maybe uh, when I, there was so much like angst and like, there's no way I could do a better job than what they were doing. It's just, it's a really, uh, I don't know, I guess, uh, yeah, I don't know the right word is, but it's great. So. 
It is great. It's a great story of where you can go, right? Where you can go from that, even if something seems beyond your reach at some time, but staying on the path. That's great. I love that. Um, I also love that, um, you know, all of you, you know, like we said, I think I mentioned this at the beginning, um, you know, different majors and different paths, you know, we've got communications degree and a marketing professional. We've got an art degree and a marketing professional, right? We've got uh, English um, major who's, you know, worked in fundraising and is, uh, you know, working for Dartmouth Hitchcock and, you know, a social work major, come business major who now is an entrepreneur. You know, I, I think like, too often I feel like students feel like their degree is like the name of their degree has got to be in their job title. You know, like I'm looking for that. Where's that Englishing job? Where am I going to English every day? <laughs> all over the place. You will English right. all over the place. Totally. Oh, That's what I say. People. Right. My, my, my undergraduate degree was in English. Right. And I, and I love my degree. Right. And I use it every day. Um, and, you know, and so I, I like that perspective. I think maybe that's because I, you know, I have a more liberal arts degree as opposed to maybe an accounting degree. You know, I'm really glad that my, my, my CPA has a degree in accounting and not English. Um, but I like that, that, um, that possibilities are open and it's, and it's, yes, it's your major, but it's the other classes and it's all, it's the all encompassing experience that helps prepare you. Right. And put you, but you really, you think about it, it's the cluster program that you guys now operate in. Um, because I always feel like having a, being able to understand people helps me to understand my employees better. And, you know, when they walk through the door and I can see they're already going to have a bad day, I can have that communication with them. Like, what, what do we need to do to make sure this doesn't turn out to be a bad day? Um, cause there's a lot of personal things that people go through and if you don't support them and that's another thing, right? Having a good, uh, someone in good management, that's, that's able to help you in that way. So that helps you grow. So true. So true. Yeah. No, I think you're right. The cluster perspective, the very interdisciplinary nature of the programs here at Plymouth mimic the interdisciplinary nature of work, right? Whether you're pulling out your, you know, your old philosophy uh, text to, 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 uh, to, to motivate your team or your employees or to make your point or whatever, or whatever it is, right? It's, it's, it's all encompassing. It's all of that, which is, that's the power of a college degree, I think. And, and maybe this something extra special about a little place like Plymouth. So well, I want to do a little bit of a transition um, and introduce um, Leslie Blakeney, who's able to join us now. She's our Director of Career Development, and she's also an alum from the class of 2007. So, um, Leslie, um, we've had a great conversation here with these panelists, sharing some of their stories uh, to be able to share out with our students. And I know I wanted to turn it over to you to share a little bit about what are some of the other resources that current students and recent grads can take advantage of um, through your office in the career development space at Plymouth State. Sure. Well, good afternoon. I see a couple of familiar faces, but some new faces too. And um, my apologies for joining a bit later. I was actually spending a good part of my morning um, with over 100 students that are taking a career exploration course on campus. And I appreciated your comment, Anthony, on, you know, this you know, not pigeonholing yourself of just thinking of your major as the only part that defines you um, for what you can do for a career. And we were actually just spending time on that in our previous session. So apologies for coming in a bit later. Um, so as Rodney had mentioned, you know, I work in the career development office and, you know, one of our overarching goals, really kind of guiding um, motivator and principle is to respond to one of those core reasons of why students come to college. And oftentimes it's right because they want to get a good job or a better job after they graduate. There's something from a career or job perspective as to why many people are coming to college. So, you know, for us, there's that their moral obligation that we have um, to respond to that. And um, with that, you know, we kind of have this um, kind of philosophical journey that we want our students to go through that really kind of guides how we advise, how we program and the type of resources that we um, have built for students and are actively building for, for students. And, um, you know, this year has definitely been a particularly challenging year um, from an engagement standpoint. Um, so it's really, I think, positioned us to creatively think, how do we get different content and important information um, in front of students uh, and in a meaningful way um, to help them. And so, 
you know, we um, each semester do a series of like employer programming. And it's really important for us to make sure that students are not only getting it connected to employers for the practical sense of a job or internship, but that employers serve as part of that education model for them. Um, we often hear about the disconnect, the skill disconnect for college students um, and not being what we say in our space career ready. And so for me, I have a firm belief that employers play a critical role in that and providing that education and that feedback and that guidance. Um, so we often will do events where employers will do resume review days with students or days with students. Um, this afternoon, my calendar just alerted me, we have um, different employers doing virtual career chats. So having kind of those educational, informative conversations. So we're really building um, kind of that model to connect our students more with employers and um, to really develop that confidence and comfort to do, to engage in those experiences. Um, so that's certainly kind of one of the core pillars of engagement, certainly connecting. Um, and Rodney and I work together quite closely and do a lot of, kind of alumni and student connection um, experiences. Uh, and right, you, you have that narrative and that um, kind of important connection, both of that shared connection to Plymouth State and being able to provide that insight and um, talking about what you know now, like how could that have influenced your college experience differently or what advice do you have for them to maximize um, and kind of take, make the most of their college experience. So we look at spotlighting alumni in a variety of different ways um, is such a critical kind of stakeholder and audience in, in career preparation for students. Um, and then the last piece, which is kind of a huge evolving kind of service, kind of area or service model that we're creating is looking to creating more um, on-demand programming and resources. Um, so we actually this semester launched our own YouTube channel that students can access at any time to get how to um, content and material um, on kind of all areas of kind of career education and career preparation. Um, and we'll translate those into some shorter webinars and whatnot. So that's really um, exciting knowing that we can't nowadays just expect for students to, to show up just at a, at a session and that be the only way they get content. Rodney and I have asked, spoken about this and Rodney's given the, I think the best example of you know, back in the 90s and early 2000s, right, like you wanted to watch Friends, you went to NBC at eight o'clock on Thursday evenings, and like that's when you watch Friends, and we consume information and get access to information very differently now. You have Netflix, you have Hulu, you can record um, shows. I don't know the last time I watched a live show on TV. Uh, my three-year-old daughter is like used to that now, right, so it's just a very different world of how we consume information. Um, and so we're looking at that as a core way of how we um, kind of approach our education and preparation for, for students. So even this session today, excited to be able to share that out in other venues um, in, in other ways for, for students. Thanks, Leslie. Well, that's been a great almost hour together. I appreciate the time from all of our alums on this so much. And for the students who are watching, um, next steps for you. Well, I would encourage you to reach out to Stay Work Play New Hampshire, to the Career Development Office here, and to the Alumni Office here. We are here all to help you. Our goal is for you to succeed. So if you saw somebody here that you'd like to connect with, feel free to reach out to me on LinkedIn. I am an open connector on LinkedIn. I connect with any alums or students no problem and happy to help you get where you want to go and be happy to reach out to any of these panelists on your behalf and see if they, they can connect with you or somebody else in an industry that you're excited about. That's often a great first step of having a conversation with somebody in an industry um, that you are pretty excited about and we are happy to help make those things happen. Um, alumni give back in so many ways and they give back of their time, of their talents. And we just finished giving week and I'd be remiss if I didn't share. We had over 892 gifts this last giving week, raising over $211,000. So alumni give back, they support student scholarships, they support the, pro support the programs that make the Plymouth State experience possible. We owe so much to our alumni. And so I give my heartfelt thanks to the four of you today for giving up your lunch hour today to share a little bit of your time. Um, time is one of the most precious resources and 
Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thanks for Thank having you me. all so much. And students, if you're wanting to connect with me on LinkedIn, feel free. Um, I'd love to have that conversation with you and connect you with any New Hampshire companies that you might have an interest in. Um, we have lots of connections all over the state with some really great, some really great employers. So I'd love to love to hear from you and make that connection. Thank you guys. Great resources. Hope you take advantage of them. Have a great day, everybody. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate Bye. it.